I was talking with a cop and let me tell you, you need to have your stuff in order because they're getting ready. Members of the police departments all across our country, they know what time it is. They know that violence is literally right around the corner. They're seeing it every day from some of the worst things that are happening that you could even imagine happening to your family or your children. They're watching crime increase across the United States of America. They're seeing a shift in corporate mentality that drives laws that says just let criminals do what they want to do and we will hope to catch up with them in the future. Now we're looking at think tanks and other reporting outlets who are saying that this is just the beginning. We're seeing the Department of Homeland Security and other uh, government organizations come out and say that they expect new extremism to happen this year, 2023. Depression is on the rise, anxiety is in everyone's hearts, and they are feared and in the fog of war, they sit with fear. Now, right now, you can expect the cops to be getting ready. But here's the thing, they're not just getting ready for themselves and their families, they're getting ready for you. They're getting ready for you to become angry, you to get out into the streets, for them to have to use the weapons and the training that they have been given by your tax money against you in the future. This is definitely a precarious time for our republic. It's a time that will shape how we are seen by the world and the lives that we are meant to live over the course of the next 100 years. Countries across our planet are moving against the United States of America. They are, quite simply, rebelling against the U.S. regime, administration, government, whatever you want to call it. There's an attack on the United States dollar. When you and I are no longer able to afford life as we knew it, people are going to start losing their minds. That's why you're seeing crimes of opportunity increase from people who are following little old ladies home just to steal the food out of their trunk to other people just walking through apartment complexes, jiggling the door handles, just hoping that one of the doors open up. Then they use these crimes of opportunities like the predators that they are and they attack. So I'm going to ask you right now to harden your hearts, harden your home, and be ready to act at a moment's notice. It's not just you that feels that there is a impending doom taking place. It's not just you that sees these events of the world. Two people, two types, know what time it is, both the predators and the prey. Now, just because you have maybe a predator instinct doesn't mean you act on it. It just means you can see how vulnerable everybody else is. Or just because you may see yourself as a preyed upon person, that doesn't mean that you cannot defend your life and take up your arms or your fist or your heart to defend the life of somebody else. What you have to do in these very precarious times is start to listen to the people around you. Watch and see what is happening with your eyes wide open. You know, it's so funny that they have politicized the idea of becoming woke and they have taken away from it the root of what that means, to be awakened. We talked about it here in what is now considered the prepper or survivalist community for decades, being awake because you were no longer a sleeping member of community. You, instead, were a member of society who knew that every time you get pulled over, it could be a time that is dangerous for your family. You knew that money made the world go round, and so if you had enough money, you could get away with whatever you wanted. And you knew that the times that we are facing right now were coming in short order. So Russia, China, they are leveraging the largest political geopolitical and economic war that we ever have ever experienced against our country. It will be a war that drives on for years, maybe even decades, and before long you're going to start to see this become hot and out in the open. We have a very real threat of nuclear conflict here in our future, and we have a very concerning threat, according to Russia, that they have developed a bioweapon. This is directly out of the Russian government's mouth. They have developed a bioweapon that would only target and only affect Anglo-Saxons. They say that the end of America is already here. 
The Russian President Vladimir Putin has condemned all of the sanctions that have been placed against Russia, the hundreds of billions of dollars that are reportedly stolen from the Russian economy, and in doing so, in pulling the only card that America felt that it had as it's being torn between multiple conflict fronts, America has damned itself. We have seen that the sanctions card really does nothing, and instead, all of the Countries that were running against America decided to band together and they said, you know what, it's time. It's time that we no longer use the USD as the reserve currency of the world. And they have started to wage cyber attacks against our country. They have started to initiate or uh, turn on different operations inside of America. There's reports from higher levels of government that say right now the attacks on infrastructure, the attacks on banking institutions, the attacks on hospitals, both in the digital world and in our physical world, are being run or perpetrated by the Russians, the Chinese, in some cases through their proxies in Iran and North Korea. We know that we have an issue with allowing individuals into this country that at one point in time could be activated into some sort of infrastructural attack group. How do we know this? because it's open admission in the U.S. government that we are doing the exact same thing inside of Russia. We have operatives inside of Iran. We have them everywhere except maybe North Korea or China, because those countries, under penalty of death, will not allow that sort of uh, undescribable uh, ambiguity take place. And so here we sit at what could be the end of the American empire, what is the beginning of World War III? And so as I talk to different members of law enforcement, paramedics, firefighters, members of government, some people in our community are politicians or they have politician family members, we're starting to see the building of a picture here, an us versus them. They are getting ready. And if you watch Canadian Prepper on YouTube, you've seen in one of his recent shorts and in some of his videos that he has some connections with the people who are building the bunkers for multi-billionaires. I'm not talking millionaires. I'm talking about the people who truly make waves around our planet. People like Bill Gates, who we just saw a video was sitting next to the Chinese president. And in that video, the Chinese president said that it was a good thing that he was here because he had not had a friend from America in China for a very long time. And so as we have these individuals making changes around our planet, telling you what you should and shouldn't be allowed to grow in your own home, how you should or shouldn't be allowed to commute to or from work, what you should do in your leisure, how you should spend time with family, whether you should even be allowed outside, we know that they have an agenda that is playing out that is not for the good of the American people. It's not good for the good of free people anywhere. And of course, we say free people with a relative understanding that no one is truly free. We are all bound by the same needs. We must remain sheltered. We re must remain fed. We must drink water, take care of family, share love in our hearts, and again, be hardened against violence. And so just like the wars that we have had before us in our grandparents, great-grandparents' times, and many, many people before them, it is time again to be ready for war. How you're going to do that and what you're comfortable with is going to have to evolve over the course of the next couple of years, maybe even just as soon as the next couple of months. Do you have things like the capability to uh, defend yourself from a distance? Do you have the training to be able to uh, really understand what happens with, uh, with bullet drop? Do you have the, uh, the wherewithal to remain situationally aware everywhere around you, even at the grocery store, dropping your children off to school, wherever it might be? Are you teaching your kids and are you teaching your family members, even the aged members of your family that might have no want in preparedness or survival, common things that will help them if you're no longer available? You see, as these times get harder, more and more people are going to need to rely on you for just daily common tasks. They're going to need you economically, physically, in their hearts, in their spirits. They're going to need to lean on you when things are rough for them, as they are for so many people around our world. So if you have opportunity, 
I'm going to ask you to please help those that you can, but please be choosy. There are also many people who will take advantage of you at this time, and they will be able to play the violin in a way that it is heard, just what you want to hear, because they are, through their own means of survival, perpetual, uh, perpetual users. And so these users know exactly what to say and exactly what to do. They've done it over and over again, and you'll start to pick up a series of patterns. Trust me, we lived right next to one for a long time, and everybody else always did him wrong. It was everybody else's fault all the time. It was never him. It was never what he did or didn't do. And so when you see people come to you with these stories of their hardships, just know that if it's always them, it, if it's always somebody else, it's probably always them. So how do you start to decipher who to help and who not to help? It really comes down to just your willingness to sacrifice. And if you're willing to sacrifice either money or time or an ear or your own feelings, your own heart, whatever it might be, just be ready to let that go. And once you let it go for somebody else, you truly did everything that you can to help. But so many people right now are falling on hard times and it is not going to get better. And what they're going to try to do in the US government is they're going to try to make it seem like it's getting better by normalizing just how crappy things really are. Normalizing just how bad your life is. And just like they're telling people not to stop theft they're telling you just to let the guy with the gun in your face take what he wants and go away with it because that's the best option. And just like they teach your children to just sit still in a school and hope that after an hour somebody shows up to save them from a madman with a kinetic projectile tool, they are teaching people to die. And what we're trying to do is teach people to live. So if you have ideas, please let us know in the comment box. Please help get people ready. The time is now. I want to thank you for being here with us every day on YouTube. I want to thank you for talking in our community, sharing this video with other people. And please tell them that the time is now to get ready. From my family to yours, please stay safe and keep watch.